Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. Welcome back to a Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. It's about 11.20 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.3 into the area of California. We'll get to the uh, rest of the earthquake activity here in a little bit. Going to cover uh, some movement out in the Ison area first. Noticing a little separate swarm here outside the Greendavik area. To the east and northeast over here, a little separate swarm coming in here across these rift boundaries. Uh, got about 30 earthquakes or so here in the last 12 hours. Uh, they are still expecting a potential eruptive scenario out here across the uh, Grindavik area uh, or northeast of there. Uh, latest updated informational statement here from the Icelandic Med Office states that uh, increased likelihood of an eruption. And this was put out today. They've been saying this here over the past few days or so. A couple likely scenarios over the next few days indicate that the volume of magma uh, within the Savartsingi area, reservoir, the uh, reservoir underneath this area, continues to increase, which could result in a new dike area being formed uh, here in the coming days around the region. Of course, we did see that uh, um, loss of magma here recently from this area. Um, I'll show you the map here in just a second. A volcanic eruption could start with a very short warning time, even less than 30 minutes. Uh, most likely scenario for an eruption will occur between the um, Mount Hagafell and this area specifically right there. Now here is the loss of magma from the um, Savart Singi area, the reservoir region. Notice that dropped off without any eruption. Uh, so that magma dike, the magma intrusion area has found its way below the area somewhere. Um, and it looks like it's still around the Hagafell area or the uh, Storis Stagafell region. Uh, as listed here on the graph, or at least in this, this wording right here. Now, the likely scenario in terms of where we could see eruptive fissure activity still paints a picture right outside the Grindavik area to the northeast in the red box right here. Zone 3 is where the, low, the most likely scenario is for fissure activity opening up. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Uh, aside from some, you know, a little bit of earthquake activity kicking up, the current GPS stations here uh, for the eight hour run times. Let's check this out here real quick and see what we have for today around Grindavik. Uh, right about here, here is the uh, inflation chart. There's that loss of, of volume from the area. <clears throat> now this had gone uh, you know, up in the inflation chart for quite a while here since the last eruption there back in uh, early February. But uh, we've seen a displacement of magma with no eruption. That means that the magma dike intrusion area has found a, uh, a different travel source, so to speak, underneath the area. And the question is, where is the new region going to be? Uh, so it's a little odd. Um, I'm really not seeing any major signs of, you know, like far as a uh, elevated area for now. I think the whole area is just uh, generally... Um, elevated in terms of the inflation out here, but I'm really not seeing any major uh, switch up here since that um, loss of volume here recently. And it was uh, it was a quite a bit here, as they mentioned. Let me go back here real quick and show you guys. Um, it looks like the loss of volume was about 1.3 million cubic meters uh, from the Savart Singi Magma Reservoir. Uh, and that's the... Uh, the main reservoir, which feeds a three kilometer long dike intrusion between these areas right here, the Hagafell and the Storis Stagafell region. Uh, so we're just kind of continuing to watch that. Um, obviously things are still progressing here. Earthquake activity is continuing and inflation is occurring across the area as well. Uh, but for now, for now, no eruptive activity taking place here across Iceland. Uh, do got to watch this earthquake activity out here across these rift zones. Uh, we did see one 4.8 early this morning out here across the North Atlantic. Normally when we get elevated activity out here, things really start kicking up here across the rift boundaries. So we'll keep an eye on that. As uh, far as the rest of the globe goes here, see what we got in the last 24 hours for largest magnitudes. Looks like uh, at least today so far, going to be a 5.3 in the Tonga area. Very shallow earthquake. Uh, that earthquake coming in up around the plate boundary itself. Did see some uh, deeper movement following that. It's been a handful of uh, uh, back and forth activity here recently. As far as New Zealand goes, looks like uh, most of that activity 
Uh, well, there, it looks like there's a three-pointer down along the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Doesn't look like uh, too much newer activity taking place here in the New Zealand region. Still seeing some elevated activity here across the Greece area where we're seeing a, a, a decent earthquake swarm take place out there. Let's go to the EMSC model here real quick. Stand by. And uh, we'll take a look at this area. Now, the region of interest is going to be just offshore here into the Ionian Sea region. This here is the last 24 hours. Doesn't look like we've seen any, anything in the last hour, but uh, overall, uh, definitely has been elevated out here. So temporary pause in the movement, it looks like at least for the last couple hours, but we're still seeing, uh, still kind of watching this area in terms of that earthquake movement out there in that region. Uh, New Zealand, let's double check this with the EMSC model here. These are last 24 hours of earthquakes here in the area. A couple threes out there. Uh, mainly off the North Island coast and around the Bay of Plenty. Nothing in the last hour, but of course we've seen uh, quite a bit of deeper movement quakes out here recently across the North Island area. And uh, really haven't seen any main shaking going on here for now. Still a little worried though about uh, you know that deeper activity. It does add strain up across the plate boundaries there where we expect to see some of the uh, larger activity take place. Um, so here's some of the earthquake activity uh, mentioned across the GeoNet servers. There's some of those threes popping up here. 4.2 a couple days ago. Um, so, you know, things may be taking a little pause right now, but uh, don't let your guard down out there. Far as the seismograph stations go here, this gives us a good indicator of what's going on. Maybe stuff that's not being mentioned. And as you can see, things look fairly quiet here in the last 24 hours as uh, far as earthquake activity goes in the region aside from some of those threes that are occurring uh, just off the North Island coast. All right, getting back here to the West Coast area. See what we got up north. Any movement going on? Looks like Mount St. Helens having a little bit of earthquake activity. A couple smaller quakes from yesterday. Now, I don't think those were up there on the update last night, were they? Uh, let's go double check and see what's going on there across the Mount St. Helens area. It's been a little while since we've checked it. Uh, the color code still in the green. Uh, last year, we had a little earthquake activity out there, a couple months of some swarming. Uh, but let's take a look and see what we got here around the area. Here is the gas monitoring stations here that monitor volcanic gases uh, around that volcano. Um, let's see here. Sulfur dioxide looks like it's offline. Hydrogen sulfide doesn't look like there's too... Uh, much in terms of elevated movement this is all typical activity hydrogen sulfide as well and as you can see here in the past month there's really been no spike of any type of volcanic gases so that's good that's kind of what you got to look for in terms of uh you know maybe uh, some elevated activity out there seismograph station out here shows a handful of smaller quakes um i do see the ones that they're talking about here looks like we've had a couple today as well that's going to be these uh, lines, those darker, thicker colored lines. They look a little bit larger than the ones from yesterday. Uh, and of course, it looks like we have a couple other smaller ones in here as well. If you really look at all these uh, little spikes, some of it could be some ice quakes, but some of it could be uh, also earthquake activity. I'm sure there's a lot of snow up there. Uh, and sometimes the weather does play a part on these earthquake or these uh, signals that are showing up here on the graph. But those actually look like earthquake activity uh, events. So, uh, and more so these thicker ones. So we'll continue to watch that. Definitely looks like things may be stirring up back out there in terms of earthquake activity. At least on that station. Uh, see what we got here from this station here. Some of the some of the other earthquakes are showing up here as well on that seismograph station there. That's just to the north of the summit. So. Yeah, we'll check back on this tonight and see if anything uh, has kicked up. But for now, just a small amount of earthquake activity there across Mount St. Helens, a volcano in Washington. Northern California, fairly quiet aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, which is the uh, some energy, uh, energy plants out here that uh, create energy. Uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco Zoo, and the... Uh, well, looks like another 1.9 there from yesterday. So a handful of smaller quakes here across the plate boundary on the San Francisco. Well, on the plate boundary here near San Francisco. That's the San Andreas Fault 2.0 coming in earlier this morning. And a little bit of decent activity here across the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. Further down south, everything looks fairly quiet. Not really seeing too much activity. 
One little lonesome earthquake this morning, about 3 o'clock or so, on the uh, North American side of the plate boundary, right uh, right in that danger zone, so to speak, where we expect... Uh, well, this is basically an area that builds up a lot of tension and pressure due to the plate boundary itself. A lot of, uh, uh, a lot of displacement going on here recently within the mountains, so uh, I'm just kind of watching that area. Get a little, little nervous when I start seeing uh, some activity stir up here, but that's just a little two-pointer. If we start seeing some swarming, then yeah, we'll we'll definitely uh, keep a more closer eye on that. Uh, up in Yellowstone, Yellowstone National Park, looks like they had a couple earthquakes this morning. 2.3 and a, a 0.8. So let's go double check here, see what we got. All right, that two-pointer definitely showing up here across the park. That's going to be this one. Uh, fairly nice signal. Uh, but aside from that, it looks like a general microquake activity out here. Some of these smaller events, but uh, there's some of the... Earthquake activity that did take place, and that is being mentioned there on the USGS map. Again, nothing big, just a little 2.3 and some smaller quakes out there. Texas, still seeing some activity in the oil fields. Oklahoma as well. One little lonesome earthquake up in Illinois from early this morning, 2.5. All right, Puerto Rico Trench here. Let's see if we got anything else stirring up here this morning. Most of this activity looks like it's from yesterday. A um, couple of threes and some fours here. We did have another four-pointer this morning, it looks like, in this swarm of activity that is in the Mona Trough area. So that uh, looks like we're seeing a little bit of strain and stress out here against the Caribbean plate. Uh, so we continue to watch that. There's a four-pointer out here south of the Philippines. Uh, far as, uh, goodness, we've actually gone pretty quiet out here across the western areas of the Pacific plate. Includes Japan, the Kuro Kamachaka up there, and the uh, areas mainly north of the Philippines. All gone fairly quiet right now. Uh, still got to keep an eye on this area. Got a three-pointer coming in, and this has been the region, uh, the source of the uh, earthquakes warming out here across the plate boundary. So it looks like something wants to kick up out here. It's been a couple days of the swarming, so we'll continue to watch it and see what plays out. Uh, aside from that, South America region, a handful of smaller quakes and uh, Middle America trench scene. A little uptick here today with uh, quite a few forests stirring up there across this plate boundary right here. But USGS not showing anything, uh, but we're definitely seeing some activity stirring up there. The Big Island of Hawaii, not a whole lot of activity. A couple of earthquakes here in the last hour or so. Uh, let's check out the informational statement here on Hawaii, see if anything's changed. It really hasn't, I don't think, but... We will double check that. And as uh, far as the update goes here from the Kilauea volcano, this update was put out today from the USGS showing that the volcano is currently not erupting. And due to continued low rates of seismicity, the HVO will issue weekly updates now on Tuesdays until further notice. So uh, with things going down, uh, they've just kind of focused on it'll be weekly updates now. Uh, let's see what we got here for deformation data. Now, the deformation uh, in the last 30 days here, this is, uh, you know, it may look like things are going up and up and up, but it doesn't quite show what happened back in early February, where we've seen a huge displacement of magma from the summit off to the southwest rift zone, and since then, we've just been very low. We've been seeing these little gradual stair-stepping events of intrusion, but uh, nothing as what we had seen here in the months past uh, when we've seen that elevated activity well off the chart uh, there around the summit region of Kilauea Volcano. But just now, uh, just a waiting game, I guess. Not a whole lot of activity stirring up there uh, for now. All right, space weather activity. See if anything else is coming in here. Surprises? Doesn't look like it. Uh, KP index fairly mellow over the last couple days here, except for that uh, event that stirred up there on the 3rd. Uh, a little unexpected CME event that stirred up uh, G2 class storming. Not really forecasting any of that, though, in the forecast for now. Very low probabilities of any aurora stirring up. And far as the solar flare activity, well, that's extremely low. 85% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, and then, of course, probably less than 1% for all other categories. A look at the latest imagery here in the terms of magnetogram um, data shows uh well a couple sunspots out here but there's really nothing of interest the one that we did have a little watchful eye on that was uh you know getting further increasing in the complexity is just about off the western limb 
Uh, I guess if I had to pick one around the area, maybe it'd be this area right here, showing a little bit of growth within that center core. But uh, aside from that, things look very quiet for now. Uh, weather outlook here today in terms of severe weather, marginal risk for some severe weather across portions of the south. Tech, uh, Florida down in there in the 2% zone for tornado probability. That's right here. Uh, aside from that, looks like some wind and hail events out there as well. Uh, but uh, really not a whole lot of severe weather expected. Day three does have a little bit more risk of some severe potential. We'll check that out here, though, in a little bit. That is positioned right over central Texas. Uh, we'll check that out tomorrow as more probability uh, details come in. All right, folks, have yourself a good day. I don't know if anybody else got affected by uh, that uh, YouTube and I think it was YouTube, Google, and Facebook outage this morning. It didn't affect me. The live stream's still up and running. I didn't have any issues here. Uh, neither on Facebook. I didn't have any issues. So it looks like it affected a large portion of people. But um, I was not one. If, if you were affected by this outage this morning, uh, let us know. Seems Almost seems like we've been having uh, quite a few outages here recently. I don't know if they're gearing up for something bigger or, or what. But... Uh, a little scary that things can just be pulled you know we're, we're kind of living in an informational age right now where if an earthquake happens here in california someone's going to know about it in new york five seconds later so uh you know it just when that information goes down that that's when things uh become a little bit uh scary because you know don't really know what's going on if we don't have access to social media and whatnot all right, as uh, far as extended weather outlook here, there's really not a whole lot expected. We've got a couple weak storms coming into California. After that, we're going to be warming up out here. Uh, temperatures up in the mid-70s. So uh, a little high pressure building up here in the Gulf of Alaska, which we'll continue to watch. Uh, have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. Stay safe out there.